All right, hello, Honors 410. I'm gonna start today's class on a logistical note that I'll also try to capture in writing, uh, also in the discussion here. Um, because the way I've structured this class, where you typically have that good 48 hours or so to participate in the discussion, um, with these last two class sessions, I realized that um, the class officially ends on Friday. It's kind of one of the constraints of a summer course. We don't have a finals week to work with. We don't have any additional you know, buffer days afterwards before I've got to get to grading and submitting grades and so on and so forth. Um, so the way these last two days of uh, participation and engagement will work is um, if you are not able to get to participation uh, in the discussion, it's not going to hurt your participation and engagement score, um, especially Friday's class. Um, there's going to be a limited amount of time to be able to participate, although I hope you do still watch the video lectures and do the readings and, and so on and so forth to see through the course, uh, and especially because I might have some last minute announcements and so so it's good to make sure you're, you're on top of all that. Um, but, but with all that, um, the way that I will count the discussions, I will still open discussions below. They're not going to hurt you if you don't participate in them, but they can help you if you do participate in them. Um, so part of what I mean by that is that if you're someone who uh, was in excess of the allowed number of absences for this class, where you just you know, missed some of the discussions, um, you can make up for a, a past missed discussion if you participate in these discussions in our last couple days here. Um, and if you're someone who is kind of on the borderline, in my point of view, where you didn't have um, enough absences to have a penalty for that, but I still felt that your participation was a little bit shaky, where you know, I might have given you you know nine out of ten for that part of class, or I given you eight out of ten for that part of class, um, you could conceive make up some of that ground um, if you have some good participation in these last couple days. So um, again, it's an incentive and encouragement to participate, um, not a penalty if you don't participate. Uh, I hope that that all makes sense, but let me know if you have questions as always. Um, but okay, again, as a reminder, um, tomorrow is the, the last day when we turn to work for the class. So that um, Friday of week five is our just our, our wrap-up day for everything for class. So um, the 11 a.m. is the official due date for the revised drafts, but I will accept late work, um, including if you just fall behind on that assignment, uh, or if you fall behind on other assignments earlier in the, the, se the session, uh, or if you have reading response journals still outstanding, um, any late work or extra credit work or anything along those lines, um, 5 p.m. Uh, tomorrow, Friday, is the last time to turn in any of that. So that's when the submission folders will be turned off on Canvas. Um, if you have a really extraordinary circumstance for having like one more hour will make all the difference in the world, um, shoot me an email or a message as early as possible. Um, I will often be flexible with people if you have a good reason and you communicate well in advance about it. Um, if you just email me right at 5 p.m. On, on the 14th and say, oh yeah, sorry, I have all this work I'm going to do later on. I'll turn it in you know, later this weekend. I'm probably not going to be able to help you out very much because I didn't have time to plan for that. Um, and again, I, I need to kind of get this grading done to get it submitted and keep up with all, with all of our deadlines. But um, again, if a little extra time would make a big difference for you, let me know your situation as soon as you can. Uh, I'll try to be reasonable in working with you. Uh, okay, all of that squared away. Um, let me know if you have questions about any of that as well as the revised drafts or, or any other material uh, in the comments in the discussion below. But otherwise, I did want to turn our focus to uh, Ruth's Red Ale, which is our, our penultimate reading assignment uh, for the, the session here. So um, I want to start on page 77 here. Uh, so the first paragraph of this story reads, It was awfully heavy for yeast. A silver packet that distorted their faces and its surface, covered in foreign writing of a sordid red color. Adjusting his glasses, Phil stared quizzically at the oddity. It was on sale, Phoebe said. Phil was particular about yeast strains, the ketones and esters and phenols and, su and such. Uh, on this occasion, though, he didn't ask why uh, Phoebe had made such an odd selection. They only just learned that Mom's cancer was back controllable but not curable, which meant little except that in less than a year, Phoebe would face the inconceivable loss of her mother. Best to let some things slide, Phil supposed, and hassled her as little as possible. Um, so again, we, we talked early on in the session, this has come back in the workshop a bit, uh, about beginnings of stories and how important they are. Um, and so I want to ask you sort of, um, especially now that you have the perspective of having read this full story, what, what promises or, or what kind of key elements are established in this first paragraph, the beginning of this story? What is this setting up for us? What are we expecting coming out of this paragraph and how's that working for you? Um, 
to go on to 78 here, um, I want to look to this middle paragraph. Um, so it reads, an initial step in brewing beer was boiling the wort, the sweet, ruddy liquid extracted slowly from malt barley that the yeast would ferment into beer. Phoebe and Phil had successfully mashed their own wort from grain before, resulting in a dazzling, honey-clear ale with tones of lemon from the aroma hops they added. They uh, also botched a batch that way, producing a muddy and too sweet amber that seemed flat. Using the extract saved them a few steps. The strange yeast seemed risky enough anyway. Phil watched the three-gallon pot on the stove um, to make sure the foam that formed didn't spill over the sides. A boil-over could ruin a batch of beer, as could burn sugar, so he gently stirred the mixture to prevent anything black and sticky from collecting at the bottom, adjusting the temperature dials and spritzing the side of the pot with ice water from a spray bottle now and again when necessary. Um, and I want to emphasize this moment in the story um, just to kind of talk about sort of the value of introducing kind of expert knowledge in something or firsthand experience in something. Um, I think a lot of times when, when students um, are working on stories, they, they sort of think if I go too far into this esoteric thing that only I'm interested in, no one's going to know what I'm talking about or, or be interested. Um, and that can be true in, in some cases, depending on how it's executed. But I think this paragraph is a great example of how taking a moment to really break down a process process, um, sort of buys the author some credibility, buys the characters by extension some credibility, demonstrating they actually do have some, some knowledge of this. Or I'll, I'll be transparent, I know virtually nothing about brewing. Um, this paragraph convinced me. So, so maybe some of you have brewers in your family um, and do have some more inside knowledge on this and say, ah, that part doesn't sound quite right to me. Um, th there's a risk there, right, if you don't really know what you're talking about. Uh, but assuming you do, right, again, it just kind of can buy credibility, can place the reader in this position where they're trusted. Uh, what, what you have to say and very, very grounded in the real world, especially if you're going to go on to do some pretty fantastical things li like this story ends up doing. Um, also, it can give the reader a sense that they're learning something, right? Uh, if you're having a reader, you know, read your story and they come away from it wanting to talk to their friends, like, did you know that this is how beer is made? Um, or did you know how, you know, this other process is conducted? That's something that is, is accessible, we, we know exists in the world, but we don't really know very much about. Um, again, that can be a really good place for a story to land because uh, it sticks with someone. They're thinking about it um, and that's kind of a gateway to, to think about the story even when they're well removed from it. Um, okay, so carrying on here, um, on pages 84 to 87, I'm not going to read this section here, um, but there is this departure um, to Phoebe um, staying uh, with, with uh, uh, or to uh, staying, with, staying with Ruth, um, visiting the old house. And I'm curious about kind of reactions to this part of the story and kind of what happens, um, how this is a little bit different from the rest of the story. Um, and I would suggest that um, this, this is the part um, that she's otherwise working around. I think that there, there's ways in which we can read this as the heart of the story. And if you agree with me, um, what is the heart of this story? When we go from pages 84 to 87, what is really the crux of this thing? And, and and what it's getting at. Um, and then I want to go just to the very end of the story on, on page 89. Um, so I would suggest um, the, the final paragraphs, and especially the last paragraph here, um, there's some real work in tying pieces back together. Like we, we, we get some of that expert beer knowledge. Um, we get sort of the, the human tribute uh, to Ruth in naming the beer for her. Um, we get that sort of animalistic element of, of licking up the spilled beer. Um, this idea that um, I, I might go so far as to suggest we could read it as uh, mom is the beer, and the beer is mom. We call it Ruth's Red Ale at this point. Um, this all sort of feels interconnected at this point in the story to me, which I think, again, is, is a good stroke for a story where it feels sort of complete when we get to that ending movement there. Um, okay, I know it's been a while since we've discussed a reading that wasn't, you know, a student-generated work, um, so this is a little bit different. Obviously, we're not workshopping the story. It's It's been published. It's out in the world. It's been assigned in classes like this one. Um, but so I do want to invite you to discuss the, the points that I led us to in in the video here. Uh, and also feel free to take this off in other directions and raise other you know, questions or, or specific moments from the story that grabbed your interest as well. But, all right, thanks everyone. Uh, we'll be back for one final video lecture tomorrow uh, to wrap up the class.